Welcome to adding Telerik UI for Blazor. I'm Ed Charbonneau, Senior Developer Advocate for Progress and Microsoft MVP. Over the next few minutes, we'll learn how to add the Telerik UI for Blazor to your existing Blazor server and Blazor WebAssembly applications. It's important to note that there are some small differences in the process depending on which project type you use. A few file names are different between projects, but the steps are nearly identical. These differences will be highlighted in the video. A written version of these instructions can be found at docs.telerk.com underneath the Getting Started subheading. A link to these instructions has been provided in the video's description. Let's begin by opening our project in Visual Studio and adding the Telerik UI for Blazor dependencies from NuGet. From the NuGet package manager, we'll choose the Telerik.com NuGet feed and search for the Telerik UI for Blazor package. We'll select the package from the list and choose to install. We'll also need to accept the license agreement when the installation begins. Next, we'll be adding our client-side dependencies to the application. For this, we'll need to open the host.cshtml for the Blazor server project and the index.html for Blazor WebAssembly project. This is the root document for the HTML portion of your application. In here, we'll add the client-side dependencies for the Telerik UI for Blazor. Locate the closing head tag of the document and add the Telerik UI for Blazor, CSS, and JavaScript files. The path for these files can be located in the documentation at docs.telerik.com linked below. It's also important to note that you may need to adjust the JavaScript path depending on whether you're using the trial or paid version of the Telerik components. Next, we'll need to add the Telerik components to the application's service collection. For the Blazor server project, we'll do this in startup.cs, and for Blazor WebAssembly, we'll be using the program.cs file. To add the Telerik services to the collection, we'll call the add Telerik Blazor method on the service collection. Now that the services are added, We'll continue by opening the imports.razor file and add a global using statement for telerik.blazor and telerik.blazor.components. This will bring our Telerik components into scope throughout the application. And finally, we'll navigate to the shared folder and open the main layout. Inside the main layout, we'll wrap our application code with the Telerik root component. The Telerik root component will provide access for animations and pop-ups and other dependencies that are required by the application. This next step is only required for Blazor WebAssembly applications. For Blazor WebAssembly apps, we'll need to disable the IL linker. To do this, we'll open the application's csproj file and add the Blazor link on build attribute and set the value to false. This is a temporary fix for an issue that Microsoft is working on. Now that we've completed these steps, the Telerik UI components are ready to be used anywhere in our application. Let's open the application's index page and add a Telerik button. You'll notice that the Telerik button is highlighted in bold. This indicates that the component was recognized by the compiler. We can now run the application and see the button rendered in the UI. Be sure to check docs.telerik.com for the latest version of these instructions, and feel free to submit a support ticket at telerik.com slash account under your account if you have any questions.